Unit 7, Period 7, Section 7, Life in the Roaring Twenties. Uh, this period is known as the Jazz Age, and let's watch a little short video on exactly what the Jazz Age was about. The Roaring Twenties are often called the Jazz Age, a time when new forms of art like jazz emerged with a distinctly American flair. Anti-war literature, like Ernest Hemingway's The Sun Also Rises, found favor with Americans, as did the writing of F. Scott Fitzgerald, whose Great Gatsby depicted the new American dream of wealth and success. While Sinclair Lewis examined the realities of life in small-town America, revealing its greed and lack of culture. On the stage, groundbreaking playwrights like Eugene O'Neill presented dramas that focused on family conflict and isolation in the modern age. Artists such as Georgia O'Keeffe depicted life in urban America in the 20s. Nowhere was America's uniqueness more evident than in her music. From George Gershwin's instant success with Rhapsody in Blue and Concerto in F, to the phenomenal growth of a truly American musical form, jazz. Jazz was born in New Orleans in the early part of the century, a blend of the blues and ragtime. Migrating African Americans brought this new music to the North. A great many settling in the Upper West Side of New York City in an area called Harlem. Harlem became the center not only for jazz, it became the heart of African-American creativity during the Harlem Renaissance. From poets like Langston Hughes, to performers like Duke Ellington, to songstress Bessie Smith, who sold a million recordings of downhearted blues. By 1927, Smith was the highest paid African-American performer in the world. Singer, dancer, comedian Josephine Baker, on the other hand, chose to live and work in Paris, spreading the influence of the Harlem Renaissance in New York. Women and men found pleasure and entertainment listening to the radio. And for many, radio became their main source of news about the world. Americans were also leaving their homes to find new entertainment at the movies. By 1925, filmmaking had become the nation's fourth largest industry, and there were more than 20,000 movie houses nationwide, many of them elaborate picture palaces. With the advent of talkies, movie attendance doubled. Women also saw a new image emerge for them in the Roaring Twenties, the flapper. Having finally gotten the right to vote with the passage of the 19th Amendment to the Constitution, Emancipated women threw out their corsets, high lace shoes, and dull floor-length dresses. They bobbed their hair and wore short skirts. A woman of the Roaring Twenties also had new choices. She didn't necessarily have to be a housewife anymore. Instead, she could choose whether to marry at all, have children, go to work, or build a career. Marriage became more of a romantic choice. Equality was not prevalent in the workforce, with women usually earning much less than men, even when they performed the same job. Medical schools went so far as to impose strict quotas on the number of women allowed to enter. Americans were also reading. Eight million more Americans were reading newspapers by the mid-twenties, many enjoying tabloids and magazines that featured sensational stories about gangsters and entertainers. By the end of the decade, 10 magazines had circulations of more than 2 million. Literacy was on the rise. The number of people attending high school had quadrupled since 1914. And high school was no longer just for college-bound students. Americans also discovered the pleasures of watching professional sports. From baseball's Leroy Satchel Page to boxing's Manasseh Moore, Jack Dempsey. Entertainment of all kinds became part of the legacy of the Roaring Twenties, as Americans spent over $4.5 billion on entertainment, much of it on pastimes and fads. 
Some of those bands, like flagpole sitting or dance marathons, seem so silly now. These images of an almost adolescent America, finally free of the fear and drudgery of war, are how most people view the Roaring Twenties. And in fact, it was a brief period of relative prosperity. Unfortunately, despite the outward appearance of stability, the American economy was crumbling and by late 1929 would be brought to its knees by the start of the Great Depression. But until the stock market crashed, the 20s were indeed roaring. The, um, as the movie stated, this period, uh, the 1920s uh, following World War One were known as the Roaring Twenties, and uh, entertainment was the name of the game. Um, people went to the movies, as shown in this picture. The movie theaters were known as Nickelodeons because you could watch a movie uh, for a nickel. Uh, the types of films that were shown were silent, uh, no sound, but later, as we've talked about previously, uh, Edison's kinetoscope uh, sound was added and we start having um, where people can go in and watch movies with sound. Charlie Chaplin was a famous actor during this time period. Here he is in a movie called The Tramp. And the first actual movie that had sound in it was called The Jazz Scene. <clears throat> Starred Al Jolson. Radio, as the movie said, played an important role. Uh, people would sit around in their living rooms and just watch the radio. Uh, WKDKA was the first radio station uh, out of Pittsburgh. And you can tell from the pictures here that it was a not very advanced. Uh, radio signals did not reach very far. So to start with, not, not many people did not have the ability to uh, listen to the radio. Uh, a radio broadcast that really showed the importance of radio was a radio broadcast called The War of the Worlds, shown here uh, by the producer Orson Welles. Um, the radio broadcast was a news bulletin of a possible alien attack of Earth, and so many people believe what they heard on the radio, it caused mass hysteria. And so this showed the importance of radio. The Jazz Age, the origin, of course, the movie pointed out that it was uh, African Americans moving from the city of New Orleans uh, during World War I, during the Great Migration up to northern cities. The Jazz Age would not have grown as it did, though, if it had not been for the contributions of Irving Berlin, shown here. Irving Berlin was a producer of over 1,500 songs. He uh, was the producer of 19 Broadway plays and 18 films. He, more than any other, was responsible for the spread of jazz. Where did jazz originate um, as far as mass produ production of it was Tin Pan Alley in New York City. Here's a picture showing Tin Pan Alley. It gets its name from the idea that so many pianos and musical instruments were being played up and down the street that it sounded like uh, people had opened up their windows and taken pots and pans and were banging them together. Louis Armstrong is probably the most influential jazz musician of the period, musician. Uh, he played the trumpet, of course, but he also led his own band. And as the film mentioned, this period was known as the Harlem Renaissance with a great number of African Americans moving to northern cities. Clubs like the Cotton Club, uh, were in their heyday, and uh, their biggest patrons on the weekends were white customers who would come and uh, pay to watch African American musicians. And then uh, there was such a love for the music that this grew uh, all across the country. This is uh, an example of African American art during the Harlem Renaissance. There, the Harlem Renaissance was all about two themes. Uh, in the literary and the artistic world, and that was the artist and the writers hoped 
uh, to spread the idea that African Americans had hope for the future and pride in the past. And um, two examples of this writing by Langston Hughes, probably the most famous of the African American poets during this time period, is The Negro Speaks of Rivers. And uh, here it's saying that uh, African Americans, their past, their history is part of the oldest history in the world. And then the second poem that I wanted to show you was this poem and it's mother to son by Langston Hughes and this is this is an example of um, to keep on trying where the previous poem was about pride this is about hope and never give up on your hope no matter how difficult your life circumstances are this concludes the unit 7 period 7 section 7 the roaring 20s